Well, the orange thing has let me down. You flipping bad girl. Anyway, it's been uh, pressurising, hasn't it? Probably that big flipping journey with all that weight on the back, what's done it? <laughs> so, I'm whipping the head off. So, yeah, it was pressurising. I thought it was just a bleeding issue. But it steadily got worse, and then it does it from cold now. So, whip the head off. It's either going to be head gasket, cracking head, or cracking the bore. Yeah, and I had the rocker cover off the other day, and I noticed one of the lobes and the injectors is really bad on the cam, and one of the rollers is gone as well. So look at that, it's quite bad, that, isn't it? Can't really tell on here. There you go. So, I'll chuck a cam in it as well. And the new rocker shaft and roller set up. Disconnect the banjo off the top of the turbo. And uh, I undo that big nut at the bottom for the drain of the turbo. And then undo the flange, move the turbo back out of the way. And then just take the pipe off for the heater hose. And then the top hose. And then you can do it in that manifold on as well. Just end up disconnecting the oil feed, which goes to the vacuum pump. And then all the glow plug wires. And then obviously the map sensor wire. And then the temperature sensor wire, which goes into the same bit of loom. And then just shove them all through the little runners of the inlet manifold. And then disconnect the fuel pipes. I haven't got a cooler on mine, that's why I've got an input and an output like that. And then the fuel temperature. And then all I've got to do then is take that little bracket off, which stabilises the alternator. And then you've got to take the tensioner out. And then that XE head, which holds the guide in for the timing chain. Then I've put it at top dead centre. And I'm just going to whip these three off and move the sprocket out. Undo our head bolts and pull her off. Well, it's off. I've not had a massive look at it, but I reckon it's gone on the back edge. So, see, can't really tell on the head. But that bit there don't look good, does it? <laughs> So it's been bypassing. I know that's an oil way and the waterway is up here, but uh, it can track up here quite easy through gasket. And then if I look on the head gasket, if I whip it over, let me just whip it over. You can see there in the same place. That's not good, that, is it? And it's actually where you've got the laminated pieces in the middle. It's forced one of them that way a bit. So, yeah, I'll have a proper good look at it. But, yeah, it's looking like it's the head gasket. So, happy days, mate. I'm going to check out bores and that. Don't look that bad in there, actually. Looks like it's been burning all right. No melted combustion chambers in the piston crowns. So yeah, give it a good clean up, have a good examination and then roll it over and check all the bores, you know, for cracks and that. But uh, hopefully it's just the head gasket. You can see how much that centre layer has been shoved over that way. The whole ring is further in, in between each layer. And over to the right. <laughs> yeah. Not good, that, is it? So it's been bypassing because this area's gone thinner because of that centre section's gone that way. Too much boost, that, on standard head bolts, in it. <laughs> naughty, naughty. But, yeah, happy days. It's only a gasket. So not too bad, that. So the block's all right, anyway. And it's uh, it's not warped. And the bores are all right. So I've cleaned all that off and then I've just put the old bolts in slowly to get all the crap out of the bottom and to get the oil out. So what I'll do is I'll just get 
some old some red diesel sprayed down the sides there clean all them out get the airline down let all that drip in the sump and then obviously change the oil i'll do the spinny filter centrifugal filter and then the oil filter put new ones of them in new oil in it um new l ring gasket on it and then it's not too bad the engine it's in pretty good nick actually after the abuse of give it over the years <laughs> so that's all good so then the face of that's not too bad as well that 15p head will come off it so i might use that again and i'm just going to strip it down like i say put a cam in it and the um rocker shaft with the roller rockers on it and that so i'll get that stripped down set the top half of the head off and give it a cleaning parts cleaner next so yeah pretty chuffed with that you can still see all the original honing marks and pistons are like new really and i'll give it some right abuse i mean i'm testing like six or seven ecus a day in this and then uh still on the original starter motor still going shouldn't have said that should i <laughs> Anyway, I got my L-ring gasket chuck on there. So once I've done the head, put it back together. Well, I managed to get all the glow plugs out without snapping any of them. So that's a bonus. <laughs> So all right, the gauze filter. Flipping day them, you know. <laughs> yeah, and like on these fuel regulators, I mean, obviously you can rebuild and get the kit just for the uh, pressure regulator in the end with the circlip and the O-rings. But when you look inside them, you see that bit, the return, which is black, and the other bit's nice and clean. That's the inlet, that's the outlet. And that's usually black because it's bypassing on the injector seals. So it all gets carbonized on the fuel return. So I have suspected these have been leaking a little bit. So I'll do them anyway. All the injectors are coming out anyway. So I always put new bolts in because these don't have to take some hammer these you know take a lot of stress and that and if they snap you'll regret it <laughs> and so all injectors are out So that's that lobe, which was worn. It's not as worn as I thought it'd be actually. But it's having a cam in it anyway. But yeah, that had polish up again that. So I'm gonna put another cam in it anyway. I can have a play with this at a later date. And like I say, another shaft and rollers. So get the cam out and then get a little Retain is out and then get it in the parts cleaner. Well, get the lifters out and the rockers as well. Bits and bobs, mate. Bits and bobs. Best not to mix them up really. I mean you can do, but it's best not to really. But I'm gonna give them a good cleaning anyway. It's a proper monkey in there. Yeah, I think it must have been gone for a while, this head gasket, especially to the oil way, because I think it's carbon carboned up all the oil, made it all black and manky, 
I should have done it ages ago when I suspected it. But you know what I'm like, my own vehicle comes last. <laughs> so, I think I got it just in time. Um, and also with the oils, if you want to try and prevent this, you should use a VW spec 505.01 oil. Um, because, apparently, because these take that much force with the rollers, the oil is designed to not just dissipate. Some of it stays underneath and keeps it lubricated. So, apparently, anyway, I don't know how true it is. <laughs> I mean, you can do like 530s or 540s or, you know, different grades, depending on what part of the world you live in. But apparently, that VW spec 505.01 is important. So, I'll remember that. Yeah, my regarding the copper washers where they live at the bottom of the injectors. The heads are prone to cracking on the seats right at the bottom. So if you look down, you're looking for little cracks right at the bottom of the seat. But I've checked all these and they all seem to be okay. But yeah, you'll be able to see them they're a bit weaker like on the amc heads they've made them a bit more a bit more meat on them but yeah they seem to be okay so far this one seems a bit dirtier than the others it's been i reckon it's been bypassing on that i blow i blew it out with the airline um just got a bit of diesel in that through the cleaning well, yeah, they seem to be okay. So I'll give them a good clean and then start rebuilding it. Give them a good soak in first. So we'll give them a good clean, but I've just capped off the inlet on the inlet manifold. Just gonna let that soak overnight, same with that. So I just faced it all on a piece of glass with some wet and dry, like I normally do, and check for flatness, and it's all nice and flat, the head. Yeah, and also the other part of where the injector lives in the head is the outer ring they can crack as well. So they'll bypass the O-ring, and then you tend to get your oil level going high because it's filling up with diesel. So you look, look around there for airline cracks as well, but I've checked all these, they're all good. But uh, like I say on the AMC ads, even though they have a thicker seat at the bottom, they also have a bit more meat around here as well. But yeah, this is all right, this one, so it's going back on. So the head's all done now, nice and clean. It's dead flat as well. I was just worried about this back edge here, but it's perfect. So that's good. The valves are not going to bother lapping them in because I've had them open and the seats are all good and they're all sealing well. So, chuck that together, there's the carrier. I've done the inlet manifold as well and that was quite clean inside as well, surprisingly. So yeah, not too bad at all, mate. So yeah, looking at the cam, what's come out of it. You can see it there, can't you? And then that's the, the roller. It's not the best. It's actually sticking a little bit as well because it's going a bit wider. There's a lot of force involved in these injectors because there's the other one there. It's quite bad as well. Because they don't turn round the way where the ramp's shallow. They go dead abrupt. So the roller goes, boom, right up there. So it's a lot, a lot of stress on this part of the lobe. But that's the way they work, the injectors. So you look at that one matching that one. That's bad as well, isn't it? I mean, I've seen a lot worse. I mean, this can will go again, uh, but I'm not putting it in. But yeah, so get the uh, proper grade oil, like I say. To be honest, I've not flipping service this in far too long <laughs> so it's probably my own fault isn't it <laughs> never mind it's pretty standard setup this anyway 
but I'll still cut the webs out of the manifold just stop it from warping and like the turbo on it it's only standard turbo it's just got a billet wheel on the compressor side so pretty standard so nothing special I'm not going to go on head studs I'm just going to put head bolts back in it on this one make sure your little one-way valves okay as well should replace it really but you don't really need to so I've cleaned all the lifters all the hydraulic lifters and on all the rockers and these are all absolutely mint it's very rare they go these they take some right hammer as well because they're going constantly aren't they so they're all good and um i've flushed and cleaned the hydraulic lifters i just put them in like a little tub of diesel and then just use some pliers like that and i just put some tape on the end of the jaws and then i just keep squeezing them so it flushes all the old oil out of them so it gives them a, a chance to pump up the new oil when you first start it up so just make sure all the little ball valves and the little springs work inside them so i've done all that they're all good to go and then i've cleaned all the injectors and all the clamps and retainers clean the fuel regulator out as well that's all nice and clean so i've got another 15p cam there it was uh, I had to polish it up and that and clean it up because I had a few rust spots on it here and there, but that's good to go. That's out of a 15p, like I say. Uh, I've only got a spare 10p rocker shaft assembly, but you can use them on the 15p as long as you set the lash correctly anyway. Because uh, as you can see on one of my previous videos, they are actually the same, just that they have different castings on these so i think they're a little bit stronger than 15 p's but these are still strong anyway so that's going on to replace them over there so i can get pretty much everything chucked back in the head now and assemble it ready for chucking on yeah i'm going to take the water pump off as well i've had the power steering pump off a couple of weeks ago just to check where you get the connecting flange which drives the actual water pump they can wear out but that was all good so i better check the water pump and then possibly replace that well that doesn't look good does it <laughs> look at the state of that that is absolutely knackered <laughs> God, there wasn't much left of that, was there? <laughs> I've not seen one that bad. Can't have been pumping a lot, that, can it? Somehow. Good job I checked it. <laughs> Centrifugal filter housing off as well, just to give it a clean up inside. So I'll put a new one of them in and an oil filter. Yeah, that's what tap water does that. All the minerals in tap water. I mean, I have topped it up many a time with tap water in the past and I should have used coolant and deionized water. So I won't be doing that again. <laughs> I have actually got a spare rocker shaft assembly off a of 15p. But just one of these bearings is a little bit worn. So I'm going to take one of the good ones off my original 15p one and swap it out rather than using the 10p rocker shaft assembly even though it would work may as well keep it 15p <laughs> I've got all my hydraulic lifters and the rockers so I'm going to chuck all them in, got some assembly lube there so I'll lube all them up before I chuck them in them holes but yeah, I've got to make sure all these oilways are, are clear and then the bottom of the holes are as well but they feed the pressure from here and it goes straight down the rifle drilling 
halfway up that little cylindrical chamber and then that pumps the hydraulic lifter up at the side of it in a little hole and then uh, it just takes up the lash this hole here it comes up there and you can see these marks here that's where these channels are in the top half of the carrier so they're all where them little rifle drillings are there so that feeds all that row and then it goes across the front of the cam and then there's a little hole there which goes down another rifle drilling and that's where your timing chain tensioner gets pumped up with oil and then also it pumps it up to the top of this carrier and then how it lubricates all the rest of the lobes on well the bearing seats on the camshaft is through the top rocker shaft on the other side and it goes right through the rocker shaft and then that sort of like goes through these little holes and lubricates the cam as well so it's a pretty funky system isn't it <laughs> so yeah i'll uh get them chucked in lifters are in and the rockers and I just plunked the cam on and now I'm just gonna put some blue halomar around the necessary areas of the carrier because you're not meant to put it everywhere because you've got to be dead careful like don't go into these channels don't use any RTV or silicon based stuff because it can squeeze in there and block them all up so we'll do that So I'm meant to put the injectors in now, but I've ordered some new seals for them and copper washers, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm going to, I've got my blue alamar there and a roller. So I've got to spread the sealant nicely around there as, and then make sure it don't go in these galleries when I tighten it up. And then down here, it doesn't go all the way. I mean, you can put it on if you want, but it just ends up being a bit messy because it's a slightly different shape here. So I'll chuck all that on and then get the carrier bolted up then. I've just put it on a couple of blocks because when I bolt it down, obviously it's going to open a, a few valves so I don't want it protruding out the bottom and bending them. Talked all that down and just made sure everything's turning all right, which it is doing. So that's all good. Head gasket thicknesses is three of them, and this is a three hole one. So the three hole one is the thickest one, what they do, which most people just put that on anyway. And you're fine doing that, really. Um, but that, that's the thickest one, which is 1.35 millimetre. And then you've got like, so that's a three hole one, that. So you can tell, see them three holes there. So if you've got a two hole one, the two hole one's 1.2 millimetres. And then the one hole one is 1.27 millimetres. Why Lamro have decided to do it like that instead of doing it you know, incremental, I don't know, but Land Rover are like that, aren't they? <laughs> so, if you want to know exactly which 
head gasket you need, what thickness you need, because it actually does affect it slightly because with the TD5, you've got the combustion chamber, which is inside the piston crown there. And the idea is, they do actually protrude, protrude a little bit. Let's just zoom in there a minute. So like your piston does protrude a bit from the top, when it's at top dead center, from the top of the block. And that determines what thickness head gasket you need. And the idea is, is you, they want to get the piston as close to the head as possible. So the combustion flame starts in this little chamber rather than going out on top of the piston crown because you get better emissions like that. And obviously you get, you get a better running engine. Don't make much difference. So you just do it at top dead center and back it off just so you've got like the piston crown truly flush with the top of the block. And then you set your dial gauge up and you've got to do it in line with where you've got like the gudgeon pin going into the piston because if you do it on one side, it rocks ever so slightly the piston. So do it that at the, at the back or at the front. And you've got to do this on all of them and take an average reading of it really to do it correctly. So I've done that anyway. So I've got my dial gauge zeroed and that's actually dead flush with the top of the block. So then we'll turn it over to top dead centre. So I'll just do that now. I mean, it, really, you're turning it over to get the maximum reading on here, which will be top dead centre anyway. So, so we've got there. It's about 0 0.68 that, yeah. And that's in millimetres. So, on the, on my account, looking at that, it should be a 3-0 one, which is a good job, really, because that's what I've got. <laughs> but, yeah, like I say, anything between 0 0.57 to 0 0.65 mil should be a 3-0 gasket. So, that's how you do it. And then if it was between 0 0.5 and 0 0.57 mil, it would be a 1-0 gasket and they're 1.27 millimetres thick. Or if it was between 0 0.35 and 0 0.5 mil, it'd be a two old gasket, and they're 1.2 millimetres thick. So that's how you do it. Not that you really need to, but just thought I'd let you know. <laughs> What's in the box, mate? So yeah, I got all my bits. Um, oh. Got my brother got and I ordered them through him, so nice one for that. So I've got some gasket, just in case I need to do the bottom end, which I don't need to, but use it at a later date. And I've got two exhaust manifold gaskets, one for this, one for the other build. Um, Victor Rain's standard head bolts, they're all OEM stuff, these. Um, these are about the best standard ones you can get. These, like I say, I only need standard ones on on that because it's just me daily. So I've got them. New fan belt, Deco one. I got all like the bolts for the rocker shaft and for the injectors. All OEM ones that I'm new. Then I've got OEM injector O-rings for this one and the other one that I'm building. And same again, OEM copper washers for the injectors for this one and the other one. A couple of uh, turbo gaskets. And a couple of fuel regulator gaskets. Spinny filters, a couple of them, a couple of oil filters, a couple of fuel filters, you never have too many filters. Oh, there's another bolt, what's in this one? A couple of rocker cover gaskets, 
These are the gaskets. Uh, oh yeah, I've got a couple of oil return gaskets because they always go them on turbos. And then um, these are the water pump O-rings because I wasn't sure whether they come with the pumps or not. So a couple of sets of them. And then two of the water pumps. I know they say brick part, but they OEM these and they are good. So I've got two of them. It's what a lot of people don't realise. If you've got the G, in the part number, they're, they're OEM, they're as good as genuine, even from Brit Park. And then uh, another gasket, three old one. So nice one for them. Let's have a look at these pumps, see if they've got the, uh, the O ring kit with it. Oh, yeah, they're already on them. Look at that. Well, that looks a bit better than the other one, doesn't it? <laughs> it's actually got some fins on that one. <laughs> Happy days, mate. It's a nice one for them, our kid. And get it all built up now. Yeah, I got the eater box out as well while I was doing it, because as they do, they go dead rusty, don't they? So rust treated that and then put some satin black on it and some stone chip on it. Uh, I thought I'd just touch these up again as well. Rocker cover and the spinny filter I was in while I was at it, while it was in bits. I yeah, just took the fuel filter off as well. And uh, all that back plate and then the cover was all rusted. I thought I had a galve one on it. So I'll just give it some rust treatment. I'll wait till that goes off. And then I've uh, just done the cover as well. Give that some rust treatment. Some of that stuff. So when it goes off, I'll put some uh, stone chip on it, put a new filter on. So I'll get my water pump in first. I've cleaned it all up in there. So I've already got all the O-rings on and that. Both sides. So rings. So I'm just going to put the normal oil filter on before the spinny filter and the spinny filter housing because it's easy to get to. I know you can get shallow filters, but I prefer these, I don't know, it's just psychological because they're bigger. I think they do better. Might be wrong though. <laughs> Bit of grease on the rubber, as you well know. So the spinny filter hours in next. And a bit of grease on the uh, O-ring down there as well before we thread it all through. New O-ring with a bit of grease on it as well. So, I'm going to chuck the injectors in the head next. I've got my new O-rings there and my copper washers and my bolts. Uh, took all the old copper washers off, cleaned all the injectors up, just got to take the O-rings off and put the new ones on. Down, but I like to leave them for a bit and then re talk them again because the copper washers compress a little bit. Uh, and then I've got to put the rocker shaft on, undo all the lashes before I put it on, and then take up the lash and back it off one turn on each injector. Then I'll get the fuel regulator on and the glow plugs and the inlet manifold.
So I've set all the lash and torqued all the bolts down to the correct torque. And I've got it at the top dead centre. I just need to, well, don't need to, but you can put a pin in here. And the same on the vehicle, you can put a pin in the, we take a bung out of the bell housing and that locks it at top dead centre. And then I can chuck it on when I've done all the rest of the bits and bobs on it. So my glow plugs that I took out of it, they're all open circuit, so they're knackered. Check some of my meter. But I've got loads of them. But checking them, <laughs> all them are open circuit, and there's only them four there, which aren't. So I'm going to check them on the battery now. Should have ordered some. So they're all knackered, <laughs> apart from one. And that one, the end of the ceramics come off. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I'll have to order some. I'm gonna, just going to put the original ones back in because they're not all corroded and that. So I'll put some copper slip on them and when I get some, I'll just chuck them in. Flipping it. They mustn't last very long in TD5 then. So yeah, I'll put, I'll put the fuel regulator on next. Just got to put that little gauze filter back in, which I've cleaned out. That goes in there first. You've got your little O-ring there. And then got my new gasket there as well. So I've chucked that on now. So that's on. And we've got the pipe with the new O-ring in the front of the head. So I'll chuck the inlet manifold on now. So that's it. All ready for going in. So all at top dead centre. All ready for action. So I'll just go and put the head gasket on the block now. So that's on. And make sure you got the metal locator dowels because you don't want the plastic ones. <laughs> On the turbo oil return pipe, which I've got off here, I'm going to put a new gasket on because they always go, but also these are common for bending. So they don't always stay flat when they get tightened up. And this one's got a slight dip in it. So I'm just going to flatten that off before I put it on, but some of them I've seen have been really bad, you know, so it's worth checking out when you're doing them. So yeah, I've just faced that off nice and flat. Just did it on an oil stone. So that's all good to go. Sprayed me filter housing back plate. And then done the cover as well. I've got my new filter chuck on there, so I'll chuck them on. And you probably think that I'm stupid, but I also spray the filters with clear lacquer <laughs> because these rust like anything and by the time you change the filter it's probably more chance of it corroding and popping seen that loads of times <laughs> well it's plunked on couldn't be bothered lifting it <laughs> did a lock and tackle this time instead yeah i always before put all head bolts in or everything because i've got it at top dead center both the cam and the engine i usually chuck this on just to make sure it's somewhere in the vicinity and if you ever turn the engine over i don't forget because it'll bend the valves otherwise well that looks all good that obviously i'm gonna put the pins in so i'll end up putting the pin in this one here and then i'll end up putting the pin in the bell housing as well and get it dead right once I've talked everything down, got my uh, timing pins there. So I've got that top dead centre and the uh, holes are lined up. So I chuck that one in there and it is right in. And then I'll uh, get the bung out of the bell housing and chuck that one in. And then get all the, uh, the bolts in, the head bolts. And then I'll put the tensioner in and everything then and let it get tensioned before I nip these up to make sure it's all bob on. Take the bung out. Yeah, I had to just turn the engine over about 10 mil and it'll fit in now. That's better. So that's all locked off now. All locked up dead centre. 
Yeah, and with the head bolts, I like to put some lithium grease on, both on the washers and a bit on the threads as well. Just a bit of that. Because that's pretty much what ARP do. That's like a form of lithium grease, what they use. So stop some binding up and that. And then you can torque them down and tighten them to the correct method. I do in between each stage once so I've done like say this one 90 degrees I'll put a socket on it and then I'll move on to the other one and I keep putting sockets on because it's easy if you get disturbed to forget so I do that and then I'm on to the 180 degree stage now so I take them all off again and then start again from the middle and work my way out putting a socket on each time I've done each bolt so you don't mess it up Right, I've done all them stages, apart from the last one. Started off at 30 newton metres, then it did, you know, the same route as going there. And then 65 newton metres, then the 90 degrees, but this 180, I split it. So I did another 90 and then another 90 after, because they feel like they're going to flipping snap. <laughs> so I've done it all apart from the last 45. And I've been leaving a good five, ten minutes in between each stage because I think it's uh, stretching and then waiting and it gets a bit easier. So then last, that last 45, I might leave that till morning, leave it overnight because uh, it feels very tight that. But I think these, these are a bit stronger than the, the cheaper bolts, aren't they? So they might not stretch as much. I mean, it's all right as it is, but that last 45 degrees is scary. <laughs> Put my new turbo flange gasket on, chuck the turbo back on, the manifold, and then I'll put my oil return on next, I think. So I'll turbo's back on with the oil feed and the oil return with the new gasket on, all unky-dory. And I just put that nut on as well, and that little bolt on the front of the head. And I've managed to do the final, well, I, I didn't do the final 45 degrees. I did about 30 degrees on the head bolt. So that's uh, as much as I'm comfortable with. <laughs> so they're all good. So now I'm just going to get this little bolt, which holds the guide in, in there. Put some PTFE on it first. And then the tensioner, put that back in. And then the little bracket, which holds the alternator in. And then... I can lock this sprocket up by nipping them up and take both the locking pins out then. So I've done all that, put the bung back in as well, and I've put all the wiring back and the injector harness back in, and then all the glow plugs, even though they're not working. Uh, I've just put the wires back on anyway. Map sensor, and then the fuel temperature sensor, and then the fuel feed and fuel return. Put the dipstick back in and the dipstick tube. Put the boost pipe back on. And then put the oil feed to the vacuum pipe, uh, the vacuum pump back on as well. So that's all good. So I'm gonna fill it up with oil now before I put the rocker cover on, before I forget. <laughs> you fill filters on. 
And then I just got this cover put on as well. So that's the number you want there. Uh, 505.8. That's what you need, mate. So the oil's in. I'm just going to turn it over on the bottom crank nut. Just a couple of revolutions, make sure everything's all right. And then uh, put the rocker cover on then. Yeah, I got to bleed the fuel and I didn't easily fill the um, fuel filter up with diesel, but I didn't have any. So it'll take ages to bleed. So I'll put it on the bleed mode. So leave that for a couple of minutes, probably have to do it about four or five times. You can definitely hear a lot of air in there. <laughs> Make sure there's no leaks. Yeah, we're all right. So let that do its thing for a bit. So I've got all my heater box back in and all plumbed up. Everything's plumbed up, got the rocker cover back on as well. Uh, I just want to drain the radiator because the bottom hose goes like a third of the way up, done it, but there's a little pipe behind here which you can drain it, which has just got it blanked off. So I've got to take this grill out and do that before I top it up with water and cool, well, deionized water and coolant. Well, I ended up taking the radiator out and all the plumbing and thermostat and everything and give it a flush out because it was all full of flipping orange crap so I thought I better do it while it's in bits. Yeah I forgot I got this massive universal intercooler which I fitted years ago and welded the ends on uh, so it was a bit awkward to get the radiator out because all mounts are different. Right got my coolant in managed to get 11 and a half litres in it takes 13 from a full drain so I'll have to bleed it through and top it up again. Got all my air filter back on and everything and my breather pipe for the rock cover. I've not put front end back on yet because uh, I want to make sure there's no leaks and everything. So I'm going to do it first fire up. I'll give it, like I say, give it a bleed on the fuel, but it'll probably be dead tappity anyway because all the hydraulic lifters have emptied them all, haven't they? Because I've flushed them out. So let's see if she starts. Pressure. Didn't have the flipping crank sensor plugged in. I unplugged it because it was all full of flipping fuel. Cleaned it all off. <laughs> Forgot to plug it back in because it's right down there. Right. Try again. But it's got oil pressure anyway, so that's all right. And the lift is where the pumps up be now. Well, it's all 
all done. Happy days, mate. good yeah so that's it all done and dusted all running nice i just put standard grill back on front for the time being so good to be back on road again good old orange thing and to let me down <laughs>